because it's a good story and it's a really important story for us to know. It's a memorable story. How many of you guys have heard the woman at the well before? Yes. It's a memorable story because it tackles a lot of issues all in one nice little story, okay? Things like the assumptions that we make, assumptions we make about ourselves, assumptions we make about other people, the prejudices that we hold against one another, or even the purpose of Jesus coming at all. It's going to tackle all of those things. Very similar to what they deal with in Ireland, a lot of those same kind of tensions. Now, you can find this story in the New Testament book of John chapter 4, but this is how it goes. Jesus was leaving Judea, where he had been preaching to go to Galilee, and in order to get there, he has to stop in this area known as Samaria, where Samaritans live, okay? Everybody say Samaritans. Okay, now here's the deal. There is a long-standing beef between Jews and Samaritans, and there are a lot of reasons why they are not friends, not even a little bit. But one of the biggest reasons why Jews and Samaritans are not friends is because Samaritans are a mix between Jewish and Gentile cultures, making them of mixed race. And back in ancient Jewish time, if you were not fully Jewish, you were considered unclean. So... If the name Samaritan sounds familiar, you've probably heard it in another story that Jesus told called the good. That's right. You see, Jesus used Samaritans a lot in stories because it helped make a point. It was like the most hated group of people that that Jewish people and the attention that they had. So when he made Samaritans the hero of the story, it really drew attention to the story. So this is what happens. The disciples and Jesus, they're traveling. They stop at this village to rest. It's about lunchtime. So the disciples go to find some food somewhere and they leave Jesus sitting at a well. How many of you live in like a rural town or a rural community and have ever had to draw water from a well? Anybody ever had to draw water from a well before? Probably in our modern day and age, there's like a machine that does it or your well is, you know, electronic and it can just do it by itself. But back in the time of Jesus, drawing water from a well was a whole day. It was a project. We're talking old school buckets and having to lean forward and do like, and it's heavy, back-breaking work, pulling heavy, heavy jugs of water out from the well. So as a result, it's not the kind of thing that you do in the middle of the day when it's super hot and sunny, especially in the desert. It's the kind of thing that you do early in the morning because it's not as hot early in the morning. And typically, this was a job that women would do back in Jesus' time. So Jesus is at the well at lunchtime, the hottest part of the day, and he's not alone. There is a woman who comes to the well, a Samaritan woman, okay? And that's not uncommon that she would be at the well because that's where, of course, you get water. But it is weird the time of day when she's coming. She came in the middle of the day at noon, the hottest time, to get her water from the well. And she also came alone, which implies that the village that she lived in, she wasn't well-respected or well-liked amongst her own people in her own village, Now, here is where the first big no-no is about to take place because a Samaritan woman is about to interact with a Jewish man. Ooh, and that's a big, big, big no-no back there. And here's the second one. A woman is about to have a conversation with a man whom she's not married to. And back in the time of Jesus, that was also a big no-no. So two big taboos are about to take place here in this moment. But here's the thing. Jesus could have responded to her in a lot of ways. Jesus is a Jewish man. He could have been like, ooh, you, don't talk to me. You're a Samaritan. Ugh, gross, you're gross. Or he could have been like, "Mm, only losers show up to the well at noon. Am I right? Okay. Or he could have looked at her and been like, a girl? Gross. Like, that could have been how he responded, right? But he didn't. He treats this Samaritan woman in a way that she hasn't been treated in a long time. He treats her with respect and gives her value. And the reason he does that is because he speaks to her. He says words to her. He asks her for a drink. He doesn't ignore her. He doesn't shame her. He communicates to her, and that brings value to her life. But the Samaritan woman is a little caught off guard by this Jewish man because he doesn't fit the stereotype of what Jewish men are supposed to be or how they're supposed to act. So she's like, um, (laughs) my guy, I don't think we're supposed to be talking because, you know, you're 
you know, and I'm, and so <laughs> we're not the same thing, you and me. We're not the same. So you probably shouldn't be talking. You shouldn't even be looking at me. You sh definitely shouldn't be asking me for water. That's a, like, this is not cool. And one of us is going to get in a lot of trouble and, and we should not. And you can sense the unease in her tone. And maybe for some of you this week, you like so resonate with the Samaritan woman. Maybe you feel a little bit uneasy this whole week. You've been walking around, you know, all these people talking about Jesus, and they're like, eh, Jesus, the time you're like, mm. Okay, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> if you didn't grow up in a church, maybe you're a little skeptical about anybody who tries to engage you in such a personal conversation like faith and spirituality. And people are like, come to Jesus, and he's going to give you life. Give him your heart. And you're like, um, I don't know that we should be talking. <laughs> We're not the same thing because you're, you know, and I'm, you know, and it has that kind of vibe to it. But listen to how Jesus responds to the Samaritan woman because his response is perfect. It's in verse 10. He says this, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What? The Samaritan is like... Uh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, say it one more time. Did this man just say that she should be asking him for water? Because Jesus has no bucket, okay? He didn't come to the well to draw water for himself. He's just taking a rest. Her, on the other hand, has all of the tools necessary to pull water from the well. So which one of them is better equipped to offer anyone water? It's obviously her. So her first response was probably like, oh, that's interesting because I have all the things and you don't. So I'm useful and you're useless. Not sure how that's going to work and how you're going to offer me some living water. But then the Samaritan woman moves into this next phase that often happens when you're thinking about issues of faith. She moves into doubt. She moves into doubt. And she moves into doubt because she's thinking to herself, wait a minute. First of all, we shouldn't be talking. Already cleared that. Second of all, I have all the tools and you have none. Thirdly, and most importantly, I have been drawing from this well my entire life, my whole life, and all of my ancestors, and then before, we've all been drawing from this well, okay? So what makes you think you can come in here and offer me something that's better than what I already have? than the water I've been drawing from for years and years and years, sitting right here in front of me. What do you have that's better than this thing right here? And Jesus has an answer for that too. He says in verse 13, whoever drinks this water, the water you're looking at, they're gonna be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty. The water that I give him will become in him a well of life that lasts forever. You see, what Jesus was talking about was something different than actual drinking water. He was talking about living water. This is not a temporary fix. This is a permanent fix. This isn't a Band-Aid on an open wound. This is a complete healing. What he's talking about is offering her, and by extension us, a water that restores your soul into the way God created it to function originally. Living water. And not just in this life, but for all of eternity. But the Samaritan woman, still thinking they're talking about actual water, is like, oh, great, you have an upgrade? This is wonderful. So this is what she says. Sir, yes, what you have. Give me this water so that I'll never be thirsty. Then I won't have to come all this way to get this water. That's a fair point. Yes, 100%. Like just whatever you've got, whatever water upgrades you have for me, I receive them. And what Jesus says next to her shocks her beyond all belief because nobody, nobody could have known these things about her. But this is what Jesus says. He says to her, go, call your husband and come back. But the woman said, hmm, I have no husband. And he said, hmm, you're right. You tell the truth when you said, I have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. So indeed, you have told the truth. Now, here's the thing. Shh. It sounds harsh. I totally get it. But in order for this woman to receive this living water, this living water that Jesus was offering, she has to do something that all of us have to do. All of us have to do. We have to deal with the reality of our sin. You have to. It's part of it. Dealing with the reality that we're sinners. It's such an important step in saying yes to Jesus, coming to the reality that you're not enough, but Christ in you makes you 
enough. Christ in you makes you more than enough. So the Samaritan woman, she asks a couple more questions, and Jesus is on point with all of them. And then this is what happens in verse 28. The woman left her water jar and went into town, and she said to the men, you have got to come and see this man who told me everything I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they all went out of town, and they came to him. She was so motivated or moved or inspired or convicted by all that Jesus had said to her, she left the water at the well and she went back into town to let everybody know what had happened. Uh, Did you hear me? She left the water at the well. The whole reason she had gone to the well in the heat of the day, she left at the well because apparently there was something all of a sudden that was so much more valuable to her than water. All of a sudden, she had something better than water. So much so that she left the physical thing she thought she needed to go tell everybody else about this other thing that she had received. Do you know the valuable thing she had received? She has a testimony, a story. She has a story about running into Jesus and being offered something that she didn't even realize she needed until it was offered to her. What she left with was so much more. It was worth so much more. She has this beautiful thing. So what is the point? Why why tell this story tonight in this moment? Because when you live in the desert, finding a well that has water in it could mean the difference between life and death. But when you live with sin, finding a Savior that offers you living water is the difference between life and death. Do you hear the difference? Because if you knew, if you really knew, if you really knew who this Jesus was, who was offering you living water, if you really knew this Jesus we've been talking about all week, you would not hesitate for one second to let him be your good shepherd. You wouldn't hesitate if you really knew Because Jesus is the only one that offers you water that never ends. The only one that offers you water that leads to eternal life. The only one that offers you water that fixes the broken parts of your soul and your heart. He's the only one. But don't take my word for it. Let's check in with our expert Mallory to see if that's kind of close to what she was hoping it would be. Let's take a look. 